this is a, a, a scenario custom made for your expertise. Can you take us through, a, I, I've heard so many times in the last couple of days, this idea that these protests are the biggest thing since Tiananmen Square. And I want to know if this is your opinion, because I remember tanks in Tiananmen Square, and we're nowhere near that right now. No, that's for sure. Uh, I think that's an accurate statement in terms of it's the largest since Tiananmen Square, the protest, but uh, it's not anywhere near the same significance. I think we have to look at the protest very differently, and it is directly a result of the frustration, understandably so, of uh, effectively a lockdown now for almost three years in, in different forms, from invasive testing on a regular basis to actual lockdowns and being shut in a, a, one's apartment uh, for long periods of time. Uh, so that frustration is entirely uh, understandable. Um, the other kinds of uh, 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 demands in terms of the government, in terms of freedom of speech are there, but they're really a, a small part. They're derivative as opposed to primary. It's an important point. The tension in China it, it, for the government is between opening up and freeing the economy and freeing the, the, the people from this uh, terrible anxiety that they're under, and the, the, the likelihood, which uh, the leading uh, officials say, of a very significant outbreak. The variant in Beijing um, is significantly more transmissible than Omicron, and Omicron was significantly more transmissible than the original COVID-19 virus. Uh, Chinese vaccines to the original virus were not as effective, as we know, as the Western uh, uh, M mRNA vaccines and, and the low um, vaccination rate, which hopefully is increasing. You put that together and Chinese officials were really worried that there would be tens of millions of cases and, and millions of deaths if they would open up so that you have this tension on both sides of, of this uh, of this uh, really a no win situation. So um, after the 20th Party Congress, the they they refined the the um, the, the zero uh, uh, COVID uh, restriction. They had 20 different regulations to put in that modified it, didn't change it, but modified it. Uh, the best predictions were are and still are that the the minimum time will be after the so-called uh, two sessions, Liang Hui in uh, in March, the annual government meetings. Uh, then after that, people were hoping for for some kind of a significant opening up. That's not clear to me that that will happen. I think we will uh, we will continue the way things are. I don't think there's a, going to be a major policy shift. Uh, they'll continue with this uh, uh, differential approach to lockdowns, a more nuanced approach in the 20 measures, maybe a little bit more than that. Uh, I think the protests have gotten the attention of senior leaders. There's no question about that. I'm not sure it's going to influence them that much. They've obviously put massive force on, on, the, on the streets. So uh, I don't expect to see continuation of the protest. But I think the point was made. Uh, and, and it's a pretty powerful point uh, from wide uh, part of the, the, the Chinese population. So officials will take that into account, but they're not going to just suddenly open up and expose themselves. Uh, I think we have to wait for a Chinese M mRNA virus uh, uh, vaccine uh, to, in, order to, um, in order to give the officials confidence of a significantly more opening up. And, of course, an increase in the vaccination rate, particularly elderly people who have a low vaccination rate so far and are obviously the most vulnerable. So there may be changes in, in that policy on, on, the, on the edges, but I do, I do not see a significant change uh, for the foreseeable future.